Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it so today i'm going to be reacting to this by the way a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed our channel so far thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing thank you very much i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested this today i'm going to be reacting to the concept of original sin in islam and christianity dr zaki Naik. i think i've reacted to this i'm not so sure but big shout out to the person that suggested so without wasting time let's get into the video sin they said that in the Bible it's mentioned that if a person does something evil, the seventh generation is going to bear the burden. And now there are diseases which are there like diabetes and all which are genetically spread. So this established their uh, concept of original sin. How to refute this? The sister has put forth an argument that one of her Christian friends was arguing and saying that they mentioned in the Bible that if you do a sin seven generations you will get the sin. And today is established that if you have diabetes, you know, it is genetic. So maybe the great, great, great grandfather or grandmother may have done a sin, so that's the punishment. Sister, if you read the Bible, I don't know which verse you're quoting about seven generations, etc. But the Bible clearly mentions in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20, the soul that sinneth shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither shall the son bear the iniquity of the father. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him, and the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. But if the wicked turns away and comes to the part, he shall not die. So the Bible says the soul that sin shall die. The person who does the sin shall be responsible. Same thing as the Quran. Quran says no bearer of burden can bear the burdens of others. No bearer of burden can bear the burden of others. Same thing the Bible says the soul that sin shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither shall the son bear the iniquity of the father. Means the son shall not bear, iniquity means the sin. The son shall not bear the sin of the father, neither shall the father bear the sin of the son. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him, and the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. But if the wicked turns, means if the wicked repents, he shall not die. That means he will get his reward. So based on this verse of the Bible, I don't know which verse you are quoting that seventh generation anyway, this I am giving with reference. Fine. So according to the Bible, there is nothing like original sin. It is the concept of church, not of the Bible. It is not the concept of the Bible. Imagine, as most of the Christians, not the Bible, the Christians say that Adam and Eve, may Allah be pleased with them, they were asked not to eat the forbidden fruit. And Eve tempted Adam to eat the forbidden fruit. So Eve is a great sinner and Adam ate the fruit. So did Adam, peace be upon him, ask me before eating? If he'd have asked me, and if God held me responsible, fine, logical. <laughs> if Adam, he's my great, 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 very, very, very first great grandfather, he didn't ask me. Imagine if my father, he was my great grandfather, if he commits a murder, can the police catch me? No, original sin. So in Christian countries, if the father commits a murder, the son should be put to gallows. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Right. Son should be put? Is there any country? So the country that professes Christianity and follows the Christian law, the son should be put to the gallows. And nowhere do you find this. Do you find in any law? It's illogical. So if my father committed a mistake, he should be unresponsible. Fine, if I help my father in committing the murder, then the police catches me, it's fine. So my great, great, first great grandfather, Adam, peace be upon him, he ate the apple, he didn't ask me. If he has asked your friend, then your friend is responsible. Surely he didn't ask me. And then going ahead to prove about disease. That's why she says that here if we analyze that diabetes is genetic, yes, I'm a medical doctor. I've given up my practice. And now I speak about the truth, spreading the message of truth. We do know medically that diabetes is genetic. It comes in the genes. So that's the reason she says that, you know, we have come to know that so-and-so person did a sin, and therefore it's come. First of all, it's not proof from the Bible at all. 
and this thing which is genetic. So that means we have to agree in everything. We know that many of the people who are smugglers, who are rapists, rapists, their children are intelligent. So do you mean to say because the father raped, the father smuggled, therefore the child became intelligent? Is it so? Is it so? No, if great grandfather does a sin, he gets punished. If the great grandfather does a good thing, even he should get a reward, right? So we find that many a times the father is absolutely inhuman, merciless, yet the children are very good. So surely it is different medical disease. And one more thing in Islam, whether a person has diabetes or not, it makes no difference for him to go to Jannah or not. A person having diabetes can go to heaven, can go to hell also. A person not having diabetes can go to hell, can go to heaven. The criteria to go to heaven is not diabetes. This world is a test. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah zi khalakal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this is the test. And Allah is testing. Allah says in the Quran, we test some people with fear, some with hunger, some with loss of life, some with disease, some with wealth. Allah says in the Quran, this is the test. Now the test may come either genetically, without genetic, AIDS. There's a new research saying that homosexuality is genetic. So it's homosexuality is genetic, who's to blame? God, not us. Well, homosexuality is a sin. Then it was found out that the research was false and the person who propounded that theory himself was homosexual. See, homosexuality is a sin. Diabetes is not a sin. So if homosexuality is proved to be genetic, then there's a problem. Right? Because homosexuality is a sin, diabetes is not a sin. Telling lies cannot be genetic. If it's proved robbing is genetic, then hey, it came in my genes. Who's to blame? My father. None of the sins are genetic. Disease is not a sin. Disease is one type of test. Allah is testing you. God is testing you. That now you have a disease, yet do you believe in God or not? You say, oh, what is this diabetes? What is this God? All nonsense. All nonsense. Allah is testing you with difficulties, with reward with punishments, testing you and depending upon the test, he gives you marks and on the day of judgment, he's Malik Yamadeen, he's the master of the judgment, depending on that, he'll put whether he'll pass or fail, heaven or hell. Hope that answers the question, sister. This entire time I've been thinking of, do you guys believe that if you're named after someone, you actually act like them, like you get their manners and everything else? Say you are named after your uncle or your grandmother, do you think it's actually possible for you to end up acting like they used to act when they were your age growing up and all those things? Otherwise, it makes no sense that if my sister commits a crime, I'm the one being punished for it. It's never made sense. It's not making sense now and it will never make sense tomorrow. And I hope, I mean... The way Dr. Zaki Naik explained this, everyone can understand. And if you have contributions, feel free to uh, comment in the comment section below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.